folks, Dave here at Thunder Mesa Studio, where this week I've been working on this little scratch-built ore bin for the ON18 Calico Mountain Line. And what do you know, the chute gate even works. Let's head on over to the workbench and see how it all came together. Now, as usual, this scratch building project starts with a drawing. And uh, once again, I've used some uh, blue line grid paper. This is uh, one inch grids with uh, quarter inch markings. I actually prefer eighth inch, but couldn't find any, so use what I have on hand. Um, so I've created a drawing for this uh, little ore bin, uh, the front and the side, and I've laminated it to some foam core so I can build right on top of the drawing, which I like to do. And here's what I use, by the way, to laminate onto the foam core. This is a Super 77 spray adhesive. Get a nice even coat on the back. And then I use a, uh, a roller, a little brayer like this, to make sure it's nicely adhered to the foam core. Now this model is going to be built almost entirely out of uh, O-scale 8x8s and uh, these copy stir sticks, which scale out to about uh, 4x12. And each one is about 5 inches long. So I've already cut and stained up uh, most of the lumber that I think I'll need for the project. But I wanted to show you uh, a new tool that I was introduced to. This is a little uh, Japanese razor saw for very precise cutting. And I use it with this cute little miter box here to uh, get some nice, uh, nice miters and uh, uh, angled cuts and things uh, that are nice and straight and true on the basswood. And so far, i got to tell you, I'm loving this thing a lot more than my old razor saw. I'm just going to put some clear packaging tape on top of my drawing to keep the uh, keep the work from sticking to it. Just like that. Now, as for the dimensions of this particular ore bin, it's about seven feet wide about eight feet deep and eh, right around 14 feet tall. This is not based on any specific prototype, but it is very similar to uh, bins that I've seen like this in uh, southwestern Colorado, some right along the side of the road. So, you know, it follows pretty typical practice for things like this. You might notice on the drawing down here, I've got these little squiggly lines on the bottom of the legs. And in this particular case, that just means that these legs are of indeterminate length because this is being a custom fit uh, to a spot on my layout. Some legs are going to be longer than others. So uh, just to start with, I'm making them all about four inches long, and then I'll cut them to fit uh, when I go to place it on the layout. Well, to get started on this, I'm going to build these side frames, these timber side frames. There'll be only two of these, and they're basically mirror images of each other and then the rest of the bin is built in between them. Um, to start, I will take this top piece and pin it in place, but before I do, I wanted to talk to you about glue a little bit. Uh, this is some tight bond wood glue, yellow carpenter's glue. The, you know, you can use Elmer's or any brand you like. Um, just make sure it's interior use. What that means is that it's water soluble. I mean, unless you're going to put your models outside. Um, and the reason for that is if you make a mistake, you can, you can dissolve the glue joints with water and fix it. Uh, if you use the exterior yellow glue, it's like acrylic. It, it won't, you can't dissolve it with water. So I always use the interior yellow carpenter's glue for wood. Well, not always. I like to as much as I can. So. Put a little bit of that on my little dish here and get started building this frame. Now my preference is to squeeze a little bit of uh, glue out into a dish or something like this and then use a, a soft paintbrush to apply it. You could use a toothpick or a small piece of wood. The thing you don't want to do is like squeeze the glue out <laughs> directly onto the work because trust me, you'll make a mess. So let's pin this in place and then I can get started. You notice the pattern I'm using here with the pins. 
basically locks it in place, one on each end, two on the bottom, one on the top, uh, and keeps it from moving around, but doesn't block any of the areas that I need to apply glue to. Just put a little glue on the end of one of these four inch long pieces. Just enough to cover, that's all you need. And I like to slide it up there, just like that. And then put a pin down here on the bottom, and that puts pressure that way, keeping it in place. And one or two on each side. Okay, now we do the next one. It just occurred to me that a handy thing to have, since I use these pins so often, would be a sewing pin cushion. Since I'm always dumping them out and picking them back up, pin cushion would make this a lot easier. Now we can add this central diagonal piece. And you'll begin to see why it's important to have these cuts, these miters, be as precise as you can get them. You get it right, all the pieces should fit together like a little puzzle. And the next piece can be this lower diagonal. And I'll do this, do this cross piece here. Lastly, I'll add this center upright piece. All right, let that dry for a little while and then uh, pull it off and build the second one exactly the same way. We've got our two mirror image sides. Pull this one off the template here. See how we did? Not bad at all. Now I need to attach these two together. So I've cut three of these 4x12 stir sticks uh, to a scale seven feet long, and I'm going to strategically place them to try and glue this whole assembly together. These uh, boards that make up the sides and bottom of the bin go the full width. They go all the way out to the end of these beams here, which is nice because it gives you a good gluing surface to work with. All right, now that I've got these two pieces securely glued to this side. A little glue and see if I can assemble this whole mess here. I gotta tell you this kind of uh, wobbly assembly is, uh, can quickly become an exercise in frustration. So take your time. <laughs> Don't rush like I do. Another board in here, make it a little bit more stable. Now for a little extra strength, I'm also adding some four by six braces underneath the bottom of the bin. Then I want to add a couple of four by six cross braces on the back. This. And then the last thing is I need to put in a pair of four by six supports on the front here, like this. 
And what these do is they provide something to attach the, the rest of these lower boards to that are cut right here for the opening for the, uh, the ore chute. And these are placed uh, the scale foot in from the end. And I've drawn a line there. I'm sure you can't see it, but there is a mark that I'm following. Well, my camera died there for a minute, but uh, got it recharged, and here's where we're at. I uh, have already done the uh, the side boards on this side of the bin. You see, I deviated from my plan a little bit. On the plan, they're horizontal boards. I decided it would look cool if they were diagonal, and hey, I was right. It does look cool. <laughs> I like it. So I'm going to turn it around and do this side now. So just cutting these... Uh, uh, coffee stir sticks to fit pretty much each one's a custom job one at a time and the last thing right here is uh, a couple of boards up on top on each side to act as a catwalk okay I'll take some of my stain and a small brush Go back and uh, clean up these ends. Now, I decided uh, for the gate on the ore bin here that opens and closes in order to let the ore out into the chute uh, that I would engage in a little laser assisted modeling. I've got one, and what the heck, I'd be a fool not to use it, right? So I went home and uh, I drew up this which is uh, the parts for an operating gate that you pull a lever and the thing comes up and you push it and it comes back down. I, I don't have to make it operational, but I figured since I was using the laser, I, I might as well. And you can see all the little pieces there. So the idea is I'm going to paint this up uh, to look like metal and then glue it up and uh, attach it to the front of my ore bin and see how that works. Now, I didn't have to use a laser to do this. I could have scratch built this out of styrene or uh, even Bristol board or something like that and painted it to look like uh, steel. But this is some uh, 25 hundredths of an inch thick laser board, which is uh, just perfect for this kind of application. So I'm going to put this together now and install it on the, uh, on the ore bin, see how it works. Now here you can see I've removed uh, most of the pieces from the backing um, and the idea is this kind of fits together like a sandwich this goes on here and then this piece get it over here goes up on top like that and the uh, the gate slides in between the two and once it's all assembled you cut these tabs so this will slide freely and glue is only applied to these pieces on the outside here and there's a couple extra washers and things to make things fit this is a lever which will be connected with a linkage to uh, be able to lift it up and down and uh, what i'm going to do now is you notice there's, there's some pre-drilled holes with the laser uh, in this piece i'm going to add some tiny little nbws these are actually n scale nbws uh, into these uh, holes to give it a little bit more detail, and then I'll paint all these pieces with my dark brown primer. I've already added the tiny little NBWs. I don't know if you can see those, but they're on there. They'll show up when it's all weathered and everything. Speaking of weathering, <clears throat> what I want to do before I put this together is uh, dry brush the gate itself with some um, gun metal. So it'll look like it's been being pulled up and down. And then when I put the whole thing together and install it, I'll do some final weathering on it. There we go. Now I can start putting this together. 
Now the way this is designed to be assembled is this tiny little strip here, it's about a 32nd of an inch thick, uh, is glued front and back to the inside piece and then the outside piece and then you cut through these tabs here to uh, make sure so this can slide up and down. What that does is it makes sure that everything is properly aligned. But the trick is gluing it on there without gluing the door shut. Now if I did this right, just a little filing on the sides here. And this should slide up and down inside this gate. <laughs> we'll see if it works. It works. God, I love it when a plan comes together. Now I've got a very small piece, about a half an inch long music wire that I've bent into sort of an S shape. And this will be what makes this actually function. First, I'll loop it through the gate, crimp it down here, and then the other end goes through one end of the lever, like so. And we'll crimp that down, but not enough to impede the movement. Well, the reason you need this connecting piece, I didn't show it in my drawing, but uh, <laughs> shame on me. The reason that you need this connecting piece is to because of the arc of the lever. The lever doesn't just go straight up and down, it goes in an arc like this. And so in order to cancel that movement, you need the uh, this little connecting rod here. There we go. And this shows me where to put the fulcrum, which is right about right where I thought, right there. So I'll drill a hole there, and I have this little bracket, which will go on there. And uh, I'll use probably a, uh, a track nail, go right through there, and act as the fulcrum for this lever. Okay, now I can put this whole assembly together. And, uh, We'll see if it actually works. That would be a bonus. Glue on this plate here. Use a pen to make sure it's aligned properly with the hole. And I should be able to glue the gate on. And this gate just fits right down between these two upright pieces, all the way down flush with the bottom of the bin. Now I can put in this Atlas track nail as a fulcrum and I've uh, trimmed it a little bit so it doesn't stick all the way through the back. I'm just going to add a little drop of cyanoacrylate to the end. Probably not necessary but keep it from working its way out. I'll let that glue dry before I go testing that. Well, let's see if it works. Well, what do you know? Love it. Now I've got some nice blackened chain. I'm going to uh, attach that one end to the lever. Bring another end down, attach it to the side here, well there's only a couple of things left that I need to do to finish this little model and um, one is a trough coming out here, I'll protrude a couple of feet, and then I'll make out a copy stir sticks. And I think I want to build a ladder on the, on the side here, on the left side, so they can access the top of the bin.
I built a 16 foot ladder from scale 4x6s with 2x4 treads, using my graph paper as a guide and double stick tape to hold things in place until the glue dried. Now while I wait for the stain to dry on some of the ladder pieces, I'm going to go ahead and install the bin on the layout. I've already trimmed the legs to fit right in this precise spot. A little trial and error. And I've already checked the clearances. Really important if you have something that's going to be hanging out near the, uh, near the rails. Just glue that right down there with some Eileen's Tacky Glue. Now I'll go back with some rocks and dirt and stones and uh, fill in around the legs at the bottom and blend them in just like I did on the bridges before. I used diluted white glue and Eileen's Tacky Glue to secure real dirt and rocks in place, blending the legs of the ore bin into the scenery. Now I can install the ladder. Just a couple of dabs of glue. last detail will be this trough, which I built from some coffee stir sticks and scale 2x4s, and that'll be positioned up here to bring ore down from the upper level down to the bin on the lower level. Now I'll use some ground up chalks to add a little rust metal parts. And with that, I do believe this model is finished. Thanks for following along, amigos, on this latest addition to the Calico Mountain expansion. And this is just the beginning. There's lots more details and funky old mining equipment to come before these scenes are truly finished. Hope to see you next time. Adios for now.